all you people and welcome back in to another, or I guess a special two-part episode. So today for y'all is Wednesday. The draft is tomorrow. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, Bengals only seven round mock on the on PFF simulator. And then I'm going to do my full first round mock of what I think is going to happen uh, on Thursday. So, I don't want to stall too, too much, um, but, so let's just hop into seven round Bengals. The one thing I will say is that neither in the Bengals one, nor in the, um, all 30, in the first round one, will I be doing trades. Just for simplicity purposes, I will not be doing trades. Um, but yeah. So, our first round pick. Ugh. Okay, so going through of what of my top four players, um, top four because all four of them are taken at this point. Number one, Tyler Linderbaum. He's the best center in the draft. I know that we have um, Karras, but Karras has experience also at left guard, so we can move him to left guard and put Linderbaum at center. Um, there is concerns that Linderbaum is going to fall because of his size. I don't know if there's truly a chance of him falling all the way to 31 but if he does then i would very much like us to take him he is a bit undersized but i think that that's okay for us um my number two is zion johnson uh the reverse of what i just said the one position on our line we didn't fill is left guard and there's still concerns over jackson carmen who we drafted last year uh filling that role so Gain the best left guard in the draft would make sense to me because it just feels like to me he is obviously the best left guard in the draft. He did very well at BC. Um, my number three would be Kair Elam. We need a true number one corner. Uh, we have a very good slot corner right now, um, but gain that true number one corner would be very good for us. And so I really like Elam. I think he's the best corner uh, that would be around like pick 31 like obviously sauce and stingley are going to be gone um mcduffie but between like him pete uh i think it's i don't know how to pronounce it honestly i've been pronouncing it petrie uh in like daxton hill and stuff i think that he's the best and then number four will be Kenyon green uh same kind of logic of uh johnson only he is a, he is more versatile he is a left guard but he has experience all over the line so He's number four just because he's not the best left guard. He's the second best, but he does have the versatility. And my number five person would be Travis Jones. Uh, this thing obviously says he's a monstrous space-eating nose tackle. And after Ogunjobi has left, we need someone to fill that void. So I think Travis Jones would fill that void pretty well. And because the top four players that I want are gone, I think we would take him. This is the concern that I have come uh, draft day, is that bam, 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 bam. In the span of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven picks, four, four of them were for my top five players I want us to take. So that's what I'm concerned about, because it feels like there's a drop off after those guys. But yeah, we are going to take Travis Jones. And we have a cool little thing over here where I can... Do that. Um, so round two. Oh. Uh, round two. So we just took a defensive interior. So in theory, I'd like to take a corner or an interior offensive lineman. I think it's a bit early for Parham. However, I don't think it would be necessarily a bad thing. We could also take Slick. Sailor. Sailor? I think that's how it's pronounced. But he is obviously a left tackle. Like, I, I, I see that he's a tackle, but I, like, I know he's a tackle, but... Huh. Um, looking at who's available here, I think we take Parham. I think he is a very good guard. Um, shoot. I think he's a very good... He's a right guard, though. I thought he was a left guard. Oh, he played left guard. Okay, that 
that I was like, I've looked at him. I've considered him. He played left guard a couple years ago. That's why. Then he got moved to the other side. Okay. I still think that he would be a good pick here. Um, he could also play center. So, did he have that on here? He didn't. I don't know why this is saying he could also play center. I still think Parham would be the best choice here, though. Given who is here, I think we take Parham. I didn't look at the spelling. <laughs> Oop. Parham. Guard. Um, so then round three, we would probably need a corner or something. Like, I would say probably a corner round three. But... I don't know. Um... I don't know if it's worth it to take a corner when we could take, like, a project edge like Dominic Robinson. Um, honestly, I... Th Who's that? Oh. Shannon Tindall. Interesting. Tindall. Tindall. There's Manjay Sanders. <laughs> um, yeah, looking at who is available for us. I think, given that we've gotten a defensive interior and a guard, we should try to take a corner here. So I think we take Jalen Armour Davis. Even though he has only had one year of starting experience, as much as I want a starting corner, having a corner that is um, going to grow with us is also good because our corners were serviceable. It's just having a better one doesn't hurt. So we are going to take Jalen Armour Davis. I wrote it first this time because I was being smart. Um, and didn't want to have to look back for the spelling again. So round three. Or round four, I mean, sorry. Round four. Still a lot of tight ends. And for some reason, PFF rates likely horribly. So I know that we're going to be able to get him later in this draft. I'm not going to worry about that now. Um, so what should we do with round three? Or round four, I mean. Um, I think that JoJo is really undervalued. And that is a very key thing for me. Um... In my opinion, I want us obviously to re-sign Jesse Bates and preferably also re-sign Von Bell. However, if either of them don't end up being re-signed, I would like to have a, a linebacker with former safety experience. Um, I'm putting as that in the pool to be used if one of them uh, decides that they no longer want to be part of our team simple simple as that having that uh in the back is very would be very important okay no likely got taken what he never gets taken in this oh i've taken him in like the sixth or seventh round before okay well that sucks because now all the all the good tight ends basically are gone i guess we could take ferguson I'm not as high on Ferguson as I am others. Like, Bellinger, I'm a bit lower on. Calcaterra, I'm very high on for obvious personal reasons. Um, but I think we're going to go ahead here and take Jake Ferguson to fill that tight end need uh, that we have. Even though we have signed, uh, I think we signed Hurst, right? Yeah, we signed Hayden Hurst. Uh, even though we signed him... Like, I'd rather just um, have a, a younger tight end that we can hopefully use that is not named Drew Sample. <laughs> that feels very mean, but at the same time, he's not that good. Um, so, let's see. I th hmm. I'm going to look more ADP on this one, I think. Because... 
there is reason for me there would be like reason for me to justify taking a backup QB to have a better backup than Brandon Allen but at the same time I don't know if that's really worth it we already got like Jojo Doman as a linebacker safety hybrid I know Sterling Weatherford not like personally but like the name so that would be an interesting choice um not taking him <laughs> Even though he has like the best ADP left available, apparently. Um, I think that what type of guard are you? He is explicitly a left guard, so I think that we draft uh, Joshua Zudu here. I'm. Oh yeah. Also, I'm gonna add that for that one. Um, Joshua Zudu guard uh do you play other left tackle and left guard okay so i think that that would be it, it's later around so i am less far less knowledgeable but that felt like a reasonable thing to do um so we have two linemen or two offensive linemen one defensive lineman we could take noah ellis here and i think that that would be good because he's big He's big. So I think that we are going to take Noah Ellis. Um, I just think that I, at this point, it's late enough in the draft where we are drafting for just kind of hoping that one of them hits. And I feel like drafting him is a, is a pretty good choice. He's big and can could help Travis Jones, in this case, um, push him. It's a meme pick. It's a meme pick but at the same time Kevin Huber is getting old so I think we are going to take Ryan Stonehouse as the last pick for this um, we are going to take Ryan Stonehouse as the last as the last player for our draft uh, I'm going to click over here so that we can look back at what we did before we go over there to what they rated as um no thank you pff please close thank you um so we drafted travis jones in the first round who i think is our is the fifth best option for the Bengals. we drafted dylan parham in the second round who can play guard and center right guard and center i should say um we drafted jalen armor davis a corner in the third round we drafted Jojo Doman, who was a linebacker but used to play safety in the fourth round. We drafted Jake Ferguson in the fifth round. Fifth round or also fourth round. I can't remember. I can't remember which round we have two picks. And we have one. I think it's the seventh round where we have two picks. So, so Jojo was fourth. Jake was fifth. Joshua Zudu was sixth. Noah Ellis and Ryan Stonehouse were seventh. Okay, got it. So... Let's look at what they rated these as. They rated this as a B overall draft. Okay, so they rated Travis Jones as a B minus. I would probably put it at a B minus to a B. I think that one's fair. Um, honestly, probably same with Parham. It felt a little early, but there wasn't really a better option for us at that point in the draft. Jalen Armour Davis, I'd probably put that around a B. I don't know that much about him, but Based on PFF Big Board and other stuff, it felt like a good spot to pick him. Jojo Doman, I felt like, was a pretty good pick. I put that in normal B. Ferguson didn't feel like I drafted that early. Uh, I think he's... I, I'm not as high... I said I'm not as high on him as the others, but I still think that he is a good tight end. So I think getting him in at 174 in the fifth round is probably like C plus to, to B minus level. Azudu apparently is an A plus. They rate it as an A plus. I think that he is not that good, but he is still a um, good, a good, a good late round player. Noah Ellis is big, just kind of the same idea as Travis Jones in a later pick. It fills a need that we need in this draft, so that's why I took him. Stonehouse, I'd probably have put that one at an A plus, <laughs> uh, but in actuality, Huber is getting older. And so, uh, we do need to replace him. I like Chrisman. I know a lot of Bengals fans don't. 
So that is why I, I could see us taking Stonehouse there with our last pick of the draft. Or which, uh, even this pick maybe, depending on when Ariza goes off the board, because we know he's at least going to get drafted, so they're probably both going to. But uh, let's turn that off and go in to a first, my first round mock. Uh, for, for clarification purposes, I have done this. I did like my first round mock to have it ready for this so that I wasn't going in as blind to this one. Because obviously I can go in blind to the other one because I have no idea, because I don't know what the AI is going to do. This one I have more prepared. I did almost talk myself out of some of them earlier and I may end up doing that this time. I don't know. But first overall, I'm fairly set in this one. Uh, one and two I am. It's Hutchinson and Walker. Um, obviously, uh, at least from everything I hear, is that they are a 1A, 1B at this point. I think Hutchinson is the one and Walker's like a 1.5. So I have Hutchinson going one to Jags to give them that edge help that they really need. And then the Lions I have taking um, uh, Walker number two. Just those first two picks, uh, Hutchinson and Walker, a lot of people have them interchangeable right now. I think that's the order that the two of them go. The Texans have pick three, pick 13, and pick 37, I believe. So, um, I don't think that they take a QB with the third pick. I, I just don't. In my opinion, I don't think they're going to take one with 13. I think they're going to wait till 37. That's a bit of a spoiler for a head. But I don't see any reason that they would take any of these QBs at three. So I think they're going to get the best tackle in the draft to protect him. Whoever they end up drafting. Who I, which I think is Akeem Aquanu. I think they're going to draft him and have that set up so that whenever they when they draft a QB, either 13 or 37, they have that in place already to protect the QB. This is uh, for also for clarification. Now that we're on this, uh, this is being recorded on Saturday the 23rd. As of like a day or two ago, there was discussions about Debo possibly being traded to the Jets. So I don't know if the Jets are going to have pick 4 or pick 10 by the time the draft comes around. Just clarification. Uh, so that would lead to some changes in my mock. However, at the time that this is being recorded, this is what it is. So four, I think the Jets at 4 are going to go for the best corner because I think the best corner has a better ability than the best receiver does. Uh, also, I feel like that the Jets... Feel, the Jets would feel that there is almost nobody in between their fourth pick and their tenth pick that would take a receiver, and that the receivers don't have as much oomph as they have had in recent years that would warrant people trading up to get those receivers. So, number four, I have them taking the best corner with Sauce Gardner. I think that he is better than Stingley, Ahmad Gardner, um, but I think he is far and away a better corner than corner than Stingley, so I have him going there. Five with the Giants. I see I see that they um, that they as a team need offensive line help. But they see both Cross and Neil here. And they know that they're picking at seven. The Panthers need a QB and offensive line help. So if the Panthers go the offensive line route, then the Giants can take whichever two that the Panthers don't. However, if, the, if for some reason somebody traded up here and needed an edge, then they would be locked out of him, of Kayvon Thibodeau. So I think with five, they go with Thibodeau under the Dimsdale Thibodeau. But this is no trades, as I said. The Panthers don't have their next pick until 137 in the fourth round. They are not going to draft a QB in the fourth round. So they are going to draft the first QB at six. And I believe that they are going to draft Malik Willis. I believe it's an overdraft. But I think that this is where Malik Willis is going to go. He is going to go Carolina at six overall. They need a QB and they aren't going to get a QB until the fourth round if they wait. So they're going to get Willis here and be the first 
get the first QB off the board. Um, then it's just the other thing where they got the pick between them uh, now because Carolina decided not to. I think Evan Neal is better than Charles Cross personally, so I have the I have the Giants picking Evan Neal here. Um, then we get to eight, and we get to Falcons, and they need a QB, they need a guard, center, D line. I think that because this player has fallen so far, that they're going to go with Stingley and fill that other corner need. Uh, I just think that that is, he's fallen, like literally they have him at rank two on PFF and he's fallen all the way to eight for me. So I think that, th that Stingley goes there. Number nine with the Seahawks. Seahawks could go QB here. However, I think that they, at least by my thinking, I don't, I'm not going to say how I think they feel. Um, by my think of it, if I was in their shoes, the QBs are not good enough in this class. Drew Locke is serviceable. He's serviceable for a year or two as a transition QB. So I think that the Seahawks are going to build up the team a bit and then draft the QB in a year or two when there is actually like a team around them and there are actually good QBs in the draft. So for that reason, I think the Seahawks are going to take Charles Cross. Uh, fills, that, fills that tackle need and they can survive with Drew Locke for a year. Number 10. As I said, uh, if Debo gets traded, then this would be null and void, obviously, as a draft. But uh, right now, they don't have Debo. So I think that the Jets are going to go and take Garrett Wilson, the best receiver. The I think the best receiver, right? Yeah, there isn't anybody else that's going to take Yeah, Garrett Wilson, the best receiver in the draft. I was like, there wasn't like a top two receiver. Okay, Garrett Wilson, the best receiver in the draft. Uh, I think he's better than Jameson Williams. I think he's better than Drake London. I think he's better than Olave. I I think Garrett Wilson is the best receiver in this draft. Despite what these rankings say, Garrett Wilson is the best receiver. I think he's going to go 10 to the Jets. Uh, number 11. Washington is in the issue of they just traded for Carson Wentz. They're not going to draft a QB this year. Even though they need it, they're not going to draft it this year. It is too early to warrant trading for... or is too early to warrant drafting the guard or center. So I think they're going to go with the linebacker position, and Devin Lloyd is the best that is here right now, and I, so I think that they're going to get Devin Lloyd. I think that's just... It's a process of elimination of they can't get any of their big three needs, of or their big needs of QB or offensive line, so they're going to go with the defensive need because that is the best thing for them. Um, same kind of deal with the Vikings. Uh, they are, they are at an issue of... There is no good offensive lineman. I think that there could be an argument for them taking taking um, Carl Loftus here. I think there is the argument, but I think they're going to go with the corner and take Trent McDuffie instead. I, just, I don't know why I just have that feeling that they're not going to go edge there. They're going to go corner instead. Now back to what I was saying uh, with the Texans though with 3, 13, and 37. I don't think that they're going to take a QB at 13. I again see the, oh, only one QB is off the board in the first 12 picks. We'll be fine by the time it rolls around to 37. And there is a superstar player who has who has slipped far down draft boards in Kyle Hamilton. So I think they are going to fill to draft him, draft that safety of every position need. <laughs> So I think that the, the Texans take Kyle Hamilton at 13. Uh, that just, they could, I could see them taking a QB there, but I think that they take a safety instead. Um, pick 14, the Ravens. Uh, I think I, I think that the Ravens are going to get a pl another player that has slipped in Karloftis, and I think that he's going to fall right in their lap and they're just going to take him and roll with him. Um, my, or, uh, not my, traded from Miami to the Eagles. Eagles need linebackers and defensive backs. S simply enough, um, there isn't really that many available at this point, so it'd be probably between N'Kobe Dean and Andrew Booth, and I, I think they would go with N'Kobe Dean instead, just because it, regardless of positional comparison, as prospects, I think N'Kobe Dean is on a better level than Booth. So I think they are going to take Nicobe Dean there. 
Um, so the Saints. This is the one that I uh, tossed and turned about a bit because they have Winston on roster, Dalton on wa roster. I think they have Book on roster, and then I think they have Taysom Hill on roster. I think they have four QBs on roster, which is a bit mind-boggling. So, I think that with the first one, they see that there's only two teams between them. And if we look at the QBs, there's the there's the Howell, Ritter, Pickett, Corral bunch that is still there. That is four QBs. So even if the Chargers and Eagles trade their picks to QB needy teams, the Saints will still have one of the QBs available at pick 19. So I think with their first one, they're going to take Jamison Williams. Uh, give whoever they draft at 19 the best shot to um, to have a new receiver to throw to. Um, Thomas has been injured a lot, I think, so they need they need that. They need a healthier receiver. Um, 17. 17. Chargers. They need a wide receiver three. There is no reason to draft a wide receiver three in the first round. So I think they're going to go tackle and get the best tackle available right now in Bernard Raymond. Simple enough. Uh, they need to protect Herbert, the second best QB from his draft class. And yeah, they, there's no need to take a, a number three wide receiver with the 17th overall pick. So they fill their tackle need. Eagles, with their second pick, Booth is still on the board. So those were the two I was talking about was before for pick 15. I think they go booth here at 18. At 19, uh, because we didn't do trades, obviously, no nobody trade up to here to get a QB. I was saying that more as a possibility of real life in the draft, um, but that leaves the Saints with their, their pick of the litter of QBs. I think the Saints are going to take how. I think I... It just feels like that Howell is a better fit for the Saints than Pickett would be. And that may be because I have Pickett staying right home in Pitt in Pittsburgh. But I don't know, that's that feels like the right two places for the two of them as QBs to go. Um So yeah, I think Howell's going to go and try to fill the shoes of Breeze. And I think that Pickett's going to go and try to fill the shoes of Ben. And I think that that is how it is. I just think that's the order that those two are going to go in those specific places. I think that Pickett has a has a higher ceiling than Howell. I just feel like the Saints are going to take Howell over over him for some for some gut feeling reason. Um, Patriots. They need receivers for uh, Mac to throw to. Obviously, Drake has fall has fallen down my board a bit, and I think they're going to take Drake there. Uh, Packers, some more thing. They need receivers for Rodgers to throw to. I think, I think I saw a skit by Tom Crossy where it had Rodgers going in and threatening the uh, GM, the GM being like, if you don't draft me, if you don't draft me a receiver, it just had like a just pulled out like a, a prop gun. <laughs> but so I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna take a lot of it at 22 is the point I'm making. <laughs> um, 23. I think that this is where, sadly, my number one choice for the Bengals is going to fall to. I think Linderbaum goes at 23 to the Cardinals. I just think that getting a good, amazing center. Like, as I think we saw earlier, he's the highest rated center in the PFF college era. era. Um, so I, I think that they take Linderbaum there. I think the Cowboys see players like Zion Johnson and down here in Kenyon Green, but they also see Devontae Wyatt still on the board, and I think they go with him over um, the need at over the need at offensive line. Uh, I think that he's just too good to pass up for them there, and similar for the Bills because they already have Diggs, so they want maybe you could see them drafting Burks or something here. Um, but I think here they draft Jordan Davis. Get that big defensive interior piece. 26 to the Titans. So here is where my snowballing kind of starts to happen. Uh, 26 to the Titans. 
they need a receiver. They have they have AJ Brown still. I, did he request a trade? He may have he may have also like sat, I think he's sitting out right now. But I think they're gonna go with a guard here. I think that that's a, the right thing for them to do. I think they take Zion Johnson. Twenty seven similar situation with the Buccaneers. They just lost um their they just lost their guard um to to us. So I think they're going to go with. Kenyon Green to fill that hole. Packers, um, I think that they go with the best tacker available or tackle available in Trevor Penning here. I think he is better than Tyler Smith. And yeah, I just think this is where that the Packers are going to take Trevor Penning. Uh, protect Rodgers a bit more. Um, pick 29 and 30 are both the Chiefs, so I consider them kind of interchangeable. Um... Pick 29, obviously they just traded Tyree Kill, so I think they're going to fill that hole with Traylon Burks. Um, and then at 30, I think that they are going to get that big interior defensive line piece with Travis Jones. Um, so now the Bengals are in a situation where four of my top five are not on the board. However, my second or third is still on the board in Elon. So, in my opinion, the Bengals would take Elam here. That would be a no-brainer. Uh, but I, I, I think that that is... If Elam is not taken here, then I think we take Travis Jones. Like, that's what I think happens, is that these two are swapped, if, that, if anything like that happens. And then lastly, we have the Lions. And I think that they are going to get one of the last two amazing QBs. And... Because Goff is just Goff. <laughs> He's Goff. Um, so I think that they that because Goff is serviceable, in my opinion, they draft the better of the two QBs. Valera's going to be mad at me for saying that. But they draft the better of the two QBs and give him time to heal and stuff because he had that obvious bad issue at the end of uh, the... Or at, was it? It was during the bowl game. I think it was like at the middle of the bowl game. I think they draft Corral, give him time to get healthy, and yeah. So that is my first round mock draft. Um, Hutchinson to the Jags, Walker to the Lions. I don't, I don't know why I started doing that. I'm not going to go all the way through all that. <laughs> There's a lot. I know it may be slightly optimistic for me to have a player that I want the Bengals to take here. But at the same time, I think it makes sense. I think all these orderings make sense to me. I did, I did just notice two QB, two receiver, two defensive interior, two guard, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, just like the streaks of players. But either way, I think that this is a reasonable first round mock. Um, I'm hoping that the, that the Jets and Niners don't have a trade. Um, but... Yeah, I think that's going to do it for my mock episode, my mock draft episode. Um, we'll see what happens tomorrow. But, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, uh, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe so that on Friday you can see my reaction and feedback to the first round. Um, but yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Hoo day. <laughs>